welcome to the Half Ass Homestead. My name is Angie, and today is the Spring 2024 Pantry I'm, Tour. I'm going to be approaching this tour a little bit different than I have in the past. Um, I've gone over like organizational and kind of told you what I made. Um, this time, I'm going to essentially go over the products that I have and how we use them. Give a few examples. Hopefully, you guys can garner some ideas from that. And if I can anything with you guys on this channel, I'm going to link it in the cards above and description box down below. So you can feel free to check out any recipes that you are interested in. And if it hasn't been covered, please let me know and I will do my best to make a video next time I can it. So we are going to start with organization and I'm going to give you a broad scope of how I do it. We go, these, this shelf is set up for quarter pints. The next couple shelves are set up for um, pint jars slash quart jars. Um, I have more space for quart jars just because I want to be able to fit more and more places. Um, my storage is about three and a half feet tall. And my storage, I try to keep water bath canning on this side and pressure canning back here. So that is the general rule of thumb. It doesn't always work out perfectly, but I kind of like to try to follow that guideline. So I'm going to get, bring you guys in for a closer look and let's jump right into it. Okay, I'm going to go over a few uses that we have for our jams. Um, so if I have a special use for a particular jam, I'll let you know. Um, so we use them anywhere from, I mean, outside of your regular PB&J and toast um, I use it as a syrup substitute, like waffles and pancakes. I use it in like muffins to make like a jelly filled muffin, or I mix it in with barbecue sauce to add a nice twang, like to give something like a little bit different. I also use it in ice cream, turnovers. There's so many uses for jams and jellies. You can really never have enough until your waist starts getting thick. So anyways, we're going to move into this. And then butters. I use apple and pear butters on pork. Like when I grill pork, that's where I insert apple and pear butter. Um, if you do a roast, like you could sweeten it up like and do uh, a pear butter or something on top of that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of loosely go over the rest of this. So this is a bourbon apple pear butter, bourbon, this is a bourbon pear butter. Um, I made way too much of this. It's too sweet to eat outright. And I mean, for me personally, and I just don't care for it quite as much as I probably should. So I do not believe I'll ever make this product again. Something that I do love, blackberry jam and black raspberry jam, both homemade from, you know, Caramel at home. Caramel apple coffee cake apple butter, which is really, really good even on toast. Like, I do recommend. Jalapeno jam. We do this a little bit different. Um, our uses for jalapeno jam are primarily on, like, a townhouse cracker or club cracker with cream cheese and jalapeno jam on top. Or I like putting the jalapeno jam inside of cornbread muffins. Um, so those are our primary uses for that. I have rhubarb syrup. I made this last year experimenting with rhubarb recipes. It's good. I use it for an ice cream topping. I don't believe I will be making this again. It's just not that good. Jalapeno strawberry jam. I made this for the first time last year. It's good. I wish I would have left more seeds in because I would have preferred something a little bit spicier. Um, this is also good in cornbread muffins. So strawberry currant jam using up some more fruit from here. So this is a must have. I absolutely love currant jam, um, but we always have to cut with strawberries because we never have enough currant. Here is Cowboy Candy Marinade. Um, we save this for marinating some venison in. Um, or you can do chicken. It would be great with chicken as well. Um, that's really, to use it as a marinade, it is good. 
we have a little bit extra of the mock pineapple juice. Um, you can use this in like a tequila sunrise or use it as um, a like a basting agent for a ham. So we just save the leftover juice and just in case we need it. Here is another oddball jam outside of toast. This is like phenomenal on ice cream. And I, if I were to make zucchini bread jam again, I would make, I would cut back on the pectin and make it more of a syrup, um, like a looser, more, a looser consistency. Um, so you don't have to add it to ice cream hot. Sweet onion jam. We also use this for grilling or to throw on top of a roast. This stuff is all right. I do not believe I will be making this again. It just does not go quick enough. If I ever find a specific use that I want to use it for, maybe I'll give it another shot. But until then, we're going to try to eat this down. Sweet and spicy onion jam. Um, this is also good. Same uses as the sweet onion jam. Same concept. We don't use enough of it. And there's so many other ways to do rose. I don't really think we need another one, so we're just trying to eat this down as well. Jalapeno strawberry, strawberry currant. So here are a couple repeats just in a different size. So we're going to skip right over those. Strawberry preserves, I mean, ice cream. You'll notice a really popular theme is ice cream. Um... This is not an approved method. This is chocolate sauce, so we're just going to skip over this. Um, and I will not make a video on that, just so we're clear. Um, cranberry sauce. This is something that I do enjoy every now and then. And the only use I have for cranberry sauce is Thanksgiving. Or sometimes I'll have a hankering for it throughout the year. And I just want to have a little bit of cranberry sauce. That is legitimately it. Your standard cranberry sauce uses. Oh, caramel apple coffee, raspberry jam. This was gifted by my mother for Christmas. And guess what? I love raspberry jam. And we're almost out. Blackberry syrup. This I make basically especially for my sister. She is a fiend for it. Um, and I basically just keep up. I keep enough to keep up with her. And a little bit of pear honey. Um, this stuff is good. It's just so gosh darn sweet. You can use this in place of honey. I kid you not. I just don't have enough uses for it, if that makes any sense. I use it to substitute when I run out of honey or sugar or something like that, if I can use a wet ingredient. So there is the pear honey. Carrot cake jam. This is one of my favorite jams along with zucchini bread and chocolate strawberry, which we'll talk about next. Um, this is so good as an ice cream topping. I just can't even. I absolutely love carrot cake jam and it works really good if you want to put it on top of like, like a pork loin or something. This is so, so good. On to chocolate strawberry jam. This is to die for. This is so good. I like it with um, like peanut butter and jelly overnight oats. And um, I like this with peanut butter and jelly overnight oats and on, on top of ice cream or I mean, yeah, it's good. With both of these, the carrot cake and the chocolate strawberry, again, I would cut back on the pectin if I were to make it again and loosen up the consistency. I think it would be better. We're almost out of jams, guys. All right, so on to peach salsa. This is something I just like eating with chips. Um, I'm sure you could use this on tacos. It would be probably really, really good, but I'm a sucker for peach salsa and it's so expensive to go out and buy, so that's why I canned up a little bit of my own. Cowboy candy. This is another one of my favorites, and I put cowboy candy on everything. I put it on my tacos, on my burgers, cream cheese and a cracker, um, sandwiches, anything you'd put a pickle on, I put this stuff on. I don't do pickles. Obviously. Carrot cake jam. 
Here are some pickled jalapenos. Ooh, I put cobble candy on pizza as well or pickled jalapenos, but we don't have too many. Um, we just did an experimental run to see if we'd use them and we do. So pickled jalapenos are definitely in the future for us. All right, we have um, pickle relish and I basically use it to make tartar sauce or to use things that we use pickle relish in. Um, occasionally I'll do up some brats or something where we use pickle relish, but not very often. All right, so I'm, you're going to see what you're going to see and I'm not showing you the bottom shelf directly because I don't get that low, especially. Um, so last year we canned up a bunch of pears. Um, I cared, did a lot of pears in like a very light, simple syrup. And those are used for primarily baking, um, mostly pear bread, um, anything that you'd use pears in, um, like a pear pie or something like that, but I can pear pie filling, but just for baking and eating. I love just to eat snack on fruits, like canned fruits, like pears and peaches. I did a cinnamon anise pear and I'm, I'm saving these because I only have one or two of these left and they are so good. I would 10 out of 10 recommend to throw a little bit of anise in with those cinnamon pears. Oh, chef's kiss. Uh, I did cinnamon pears as well for snacking and apple pie filling. So I did some apple pie filling and I don't really feel like I need to make apple pie filling again. Um, I don't use enough of it. I did do up some rhubarb, um, rhubarb pie filling, which I've used some of it. I used it in, did I use it in a tort? I used it in something and I didn't like the recipe I used it in. Kind of scared me off for a while. Um, the filling turned out all right. Pear pie filling. Pear pies. And turnovers. You can use it in turnovers. Um, those are basically the uses that I'd have for pear pie filling. This is like the holiday food for me. This is what I make for like every, everything. Canned pumpkin. Um, I just have some plain canned pumpkin. I just have some plain canned pumpkin rolling around in case I want to make a pumpkin pie. Um, so mock pineapple, we literally use right in place of pineapple. Um, I, my favorite recipe is Hawaiian chicken and that involves pineapple. This, you, it's good. It's close enough without having to buy it and you have excess zucchini. 10 out of 10 do recommend. Um, this would also be good on like a ham. It would go like, that's something that you could put that on just like regular pineapple, except they're not cut in rounds. I did like triangles. So tidbits or whatever. So mock pineapple. Can up all of the applesauce. And if you can't figure out how to use applesauce, I will tell you, um, you can use it to eat. You can use it to substitute for eggs. Um, I mean, yeah, that's about it. Applesauce. There are enough uses for applesauce. If just look it up. I'm not even going to share on that one. This is my favorite size pear, and I didn't know when I canned these what I was going to use the most, but these are perfect for pear bread. We canned some grape juice on the homestead. Um, just to add a little bit of sugar and a little bit of water, like break it down 50-50 and add a good helping of sugar, and you have yourself some grape juice. Canned peaches. Enough said. What I use my canned peaches for outside of just eating peaches are I like to do fruit on the bottom yogurt with it. I like to do fruit on the bottom overnight oats and cottage cheese and peaches and pepper. Um, I think that's it. And peach cobbler, if you will, or peach pie. But I did a peach pie filling, which I've done peach pie and peach cobbler with. 10 out of 10, do recommend. I have some larger canned pumpkin as well. Sweet beets, um, just for plain eating. I don't know what else you'd use sweet beets for. We can some apple juice and this stuff, but it is sweet on its own. You just need to water it down a little bit, add a couple ice cubes. She's good to go. 
and green beans. I love to eat the green beans plain. We also do Venables green beans, which are really good. Um, that's pretty much the uses that we have for green beans. We, we eat a lot of green beans. Anything you'd put canned green beans in. Green bean casserole, there's another use for green beans. Um, and here is pork stock. We have an abundance of pork stock. Um, I had enough to make a huge canning excursion, so I did a ton of stocks this year um, because I used everything last year and made a second batch, so I went full, all in on stocks this year. So Okay, so I'm not going to show you all of these. This is all chicken stock. Um, some of it's smoked chicken stock, but we're going to just skip right over those. I made diced tomatoes um a few of those i use those in chili um basically chili base um or tomato based soups so just so we have them around in case we have a hankering for chili i made barbecue sauce and this is the this is the almost sweet baby rays barbecue sauce. It's good. I am working on developing some barbecue sauces to can. This stuff gives me a little bit of heartburn and I'm going to find some recipes and I intend on pressure canning them. Bloody Mary mix. Andy drinks some Bloody Marys. I did a smoked Bloody Mary mix and a regular Bloody Mary mix. Tomato jam. Um, this stuff is pretty good. I basically have one use for it. It's cream cheese and a cracker. It's another one of those charcuterie board type dealios um, to pass around. It is very good. It's sweet though. So like if it's, it's a sweet spicy jam, like it's spiced. It's a sweet spice jam. Um, that is the only use I have for this. If you have any other uses, please let me know in the comment section down below because I am intrigued. This is Thai chili sauce. Um, I was looking for a dupe for the Frank sweet chili sauce. This stuff is very good. It's very spicy. It's sweet, but yet it still has a tang of like vinegar. This stuff's very good. I use it for um, dipping chicken in. Like chicken, um, you could use this. This would make an amazing marinade as well. But it's basically, it's a dipping sauce. So I'm trying to wean myself off of the Franks. It's just crap sauce anyway. So this is kind of helping. It's just, I think it's the texture that really, it's not thick. It's not a good, this would be a good wing sauce. It's just, it'd be even more messy. And then a sweet and sour sauce. Obviously sweet and sour sauce. I use it on egg rolls and um, crab ragoons if I feel like I'm in the mood for that. Um, it's good for dipping chicken or anything like that. And I think it would make a pretty decent marinade for pork chops. Um, truth be told. Ketchup. Not much to say there. Ketchup. Tallow. Um, this is for cooking. I basically have this as a backup emergency supplies. Supply. This is made from leaf fat. So this is just tallow. I used to use it to make soap. That's another use for it. It's a nice lathery soap. Tallow is really good for that. And then I made Dijon mustard. Did not make enough. Um, I don't like yellow mustard. I do like brown mustards. This is a brown Dijon, by the way. Um, so instead of using yellow mustard, but um, I mean, use it as you would mustard. Asian chicken thighs, 10 out of 10, do not recommend. They are bland, 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 bland. Uh, yep, putting those back. I doctor mine up with teriyaki sauce. <laughs> Canned taco meat, obviously. Heat it up, drain it, use it for tacos. Great. It is nice, quick, and easy. Um, like, I think a taco bake would be really good, too. Um, sloppy Joe mix. Same concept. It is a convenience food in a jar. Pulled pork. Same concept. Convenience food in a jar. I have a lot of things that you can just slap on a bun and go. 
some more pulled pork. Ugly chicken. This is one of my favorite. Okay, so this is dark meat and onions. That was an experiment that I haven't gotten to yet. Ugly chicken. So ugly chicken I use for chicken salad. I use it for chicken pizza crust. I use it for, I'll do shredded chicken tacos and just season it up like chicken. I mean, your possibilities are endless. Like I use, if, if I'm in a pinch, you can, like you can put this in soup and just throw it in at the end, like in a chicken soup. Um, I, we use a ton of this. Um, and in the most random of ways, so don't ever sell yourself short on the, on the ugly chicken. I can find uses for that stuff. Like canned venison, our favorite way to eat this, and I think the only way we do is just heat it up, scoop it out, throw it next to some potatoes and like some Fenables green beans or just plain green beans and go. All right, so sauerkraut. Uh, we decided to can our sauerkraut. So sauerkraut... If you want a list of things, I mean, I can give you like a brief list of things that you can eat sauerkraut with. Um, great and foil packed potatoes. Oh my God, chef's kiss. Um, good next to kielbasa, um, on brats, on Rubens, uh, just straight. Um, I, apparently people like to eat it just straight with a little bit of sriracha. So that's sauerkraut, guys. Coleslaw. Canned sweet and sour coleslaw. This stuff is so good. If I did it again, I'd do it in purple. Um, I do like the purple cabbage better, so I'm growing more purple cabbage this year. But it, it is more attractive in purple cabbage. Um, so the thing we use this primarily for is we like to throw it alongside, like, I'll bring this out. Like, if we did, like, a fish fry, I would venture to either drain this and make it creamy or just as is on the side of the fish, just like you would coleslaw. A game changing meal is coconut shrimp tacos with this coleslaw and then a little bit of diced mango are the best. I mean, it is one of my favorite meals. So those are my uses for coleslaw. I mean, anything you'd serve coleslaw with. Wow, dumb. Better than Bush's baked beans. Um, so good, so good. I mean, they're baked beans. It's an instant side. Canned hamburger. Um, we use this in chili. Um, also like to use for tacos. I don't believe I'll be making taco meat again just for the sole fact that I like the like the utility of just the plain hamburger. Um, anything basically that you want brown hamburger in, you can just throw this stuff in like in a green bean casserole if you're adding burger to it, this would work really good. So you'd have like an instant green bean. Maybe that's what I'm gonna have for dinner tonight is green bean casserole. Seems to be hitting all the cues today. So, ground hamburger. Tex-Mex chicken. Have you had to try this one? I will let you guys know, but this is supposed to be a ready-made meal. I believe this is going to be something that you could shred up and put on tacos or just eat plain. Maybe that's what I'll have for dinner. And pineapple drumsticks. This is another one that I will have to keep you guys updated on uses for. Here are all my pickles. Um, just pickle spears, pickle chips, um, pickle slices, uh, asparagus, pickled asparagus. I'm not going to go over that. Um, like Bloody Mary's burgers, um, just snacking in general, are all good things for pickly things. Um, did I say burgers? I don't know. Uh, you get you get the idea. Um, I mean salsa. Andy loves salsa and eggs, or just chips and salsa, or salsa on top of tacos. We use salsa for regular things that we use salsa for. Tomato sauce. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Tomato soup. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Here are, all I have here is a bunch of dried beans. Um, these are dried pinto beans. I use those for refried beans, great northern beans. I use these in white chicken chili. 
black beans though, I make black bean burgers. I do all the things with black beans. I will actually, instead of using pinto beans sometimes, just do black beans and do refried beans. Um, what was the last thing I used black beans for? I find a bunch of random recipes for black beans and I actually thoroughly enjoy them. Chickpeas, um, either hummus or um, the only thing I really use chickpeas for are hummus, but most often air fried chickpeas. They're so good. Kidney beans, use those for chili. And this chickpea hummus, like this ready-made hummus, I don't love it. I've been doctoring this up pretty good. The first time it was okay and it's gone downhill from there. Canned carrots along with the rest of like, these work great to just drop in at the end of a soup if you don't have any fresh carrots. We also do glazed carrots, but we're almost out of carrots. We did not grow enough carrots. Oh. More chickpeas. More salsa. More green beans. Canned corn. And I think I will probably die before all this canned corn is gone. So I made the worst mistake when I canned this canned corn. I put salt in it per the recommendation. Don't do it. It's awful. It's disgusting. I'm sorry guys. This is probably going to be horrible footage. Um, these are all ideas. These are all things that I want to make myself. Medium, I want to make a spicy bean and corn salsa. Jalapeno bacon jam, I have not tried yet, but that is something that intrigued me. Medium cherry salsa, cherry salsa is good, and peach salsa is also good. Those are things that I want to can. Here I have um, a chicken noodle soup base. Pretty self-explanatory. This is in like the convenience food thing. Make some noodles, add a little bit of salt to it. Um, I didn't salt it enough. And then good to go. Here is my vegetable soup made from my mom's recipe. It's really good, but the texture really, really sucks. So I'm not even going to share that with you guys. Um, I have cranberry juice down here. I have French onion soup right here, and it. I think if we get cold again, I am going to make up a crusty bread and do some French onion soup. That's always good. And then convenience white chicken chili down here. That is the overall gist of what we have on our shelves. Um, that is 678 jars of food. Um, not all of this will be gone this year. This is for a two-year supply, which is roughly five jars a week. Um, we use, we have and flow. We use more, we use less, depending on the time of year. Um, and there are things that I'd like to add. There are convenience foods that I'd like to add and try. Um, I'd like to kind of decrease some of the numbers on some things before I add some new stuff. Uh, so that concludes the 2024 pantry challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.